The ECB has estimated that an additional $1.8 trillion in lending could be supported. How do you see um, that progressing right now? Do you have any, any, um, any estimate for the amount of new lending that EU banks are doing? It's probably too early to judge the amount of new, new lending that's been taking place. What we do know is what we do see, and this is anecdotal evidence more than quantitative evidence, is that obviously uh, ba uh, banks are getting from uh, committed lines a lot of withdrawals, mainly from corporates, and that they're engaging at the same time, and this varies a lot across the union in the different countries, but they're engaging with their customers in providing moratoriums and other liquidity mechanisms uh, some of them supported by government initiatives, some of them supported by industry-wide initiatives uh, across the country to try to make sure that, you know, adequate liquidity goes to customers. And we think that's absolutely the right thing to do. And we've been sending communications saying that, you know, now is the time to focus in providing lending to the economy, making sure that liquidity is there. Of course, central banks have been very active in providing liquidity to banks, but that liquidity needs to get all the way to the to all the areas of the European economy. And here our main concern, as you can imagine, is always uh, individual customers and SMEs because they tend to be the weakest link in the chain. So it's important that banks are active engaging with their customers, they're active providing liquidity, and that they focus on that operational continuity. That should be their number one priority. And as you said, you know, that was the number one message that regulators have sent across the union when they decided to uh, encourage banks to use the capital buffers. Those buffers are there to be used in situations like this and also for lending. Exactly, and, you, and you've allowed them to do that. You've put that uh, on the table. Do you have, do regulators and supervisors, Jose Manuel, have um, any more ammunition in terms of relief? I mean, is there anything else in the pipeline that you can do to help banks get the money out? Well, as I say, you know, we are willing to use all the flexibility that's in the existing regulation. And we're actively pursuing that. Just last week, we published some guidelines of how, you know, making sure how the regulation interacts, as I mentioned before, with the moratoria that are being put forward in a number of member countries, also with the state guarantees to make sure that uh, there's no automaticity in the regulation, in recognition of non-performing loans or forbearance, but rather that banks can use those those tools to make sure they provide lending while at the same time, you know, uh, taking the time and doing the proper risk assessment of how the risk of every individual counterparty is evolving over time. Because I think the crucial aspect is that liquidity needs to go where it's needed, where, you know, there's really a liquidity issue, but at the same time, banks need to be aware of the solvency concerns that may be arising over time and the creditworthiness of their counterparties all along, all along the the crisis as it develops and it unfolds.